Okay, so our next presentation is going to retrace the history of BIM over the past 40 years, BIM being building information modeling. And uh, this is a bit of a trip down memory lane for myself. Um, back in 1991, as a young arch architecture graduate, I first used his software, Sonata, um, to uh, design a uh, competition entry uh, for a British Steel student design competition. Uh, a couple of years later, I joined Richard Rogers Architects, and uh, there again used Sonata, and then went on to beta test uh, Reflex, which was the next uh, sort of incarnation uh, of BIM, which was developed by uh, our next speaker. I also met him at the time, so I guess I've known him for about 25 years. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage Jonathan Ingram. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about the history of BIM, as Joe kindly said. Um, it's a very personal story initially, and uh, there are a few things in it which sort of uh, I find a little bit exciting. It starts 40 years ago, and this is 40 years ago, this is the state of the technology. So we've moved on quite a long way, and it took a long time and a lot of effort to produce that image. In 1976, this is eight years before AutoCAD, eight years before ARCHICAD, uh, eight years before desktop machines. These are expensive computers. We see the programs that are running there. The top one is actually the most interesting in that that is BDS, and that technology, in one form or another, has made it all the way through from the early 70s to the current BIM systems of today. Um, as much as some of them would have you believe they invented it, it's actually been around for a long time. This is what I was working on at the time. Um, I just give this a bit of history, just to show how all the different parts came together that uh, formed BIM. Compilers, uh, finite element meshes, loops. The image, the color image on the top right, there are no color screens. So in the 70s, there are no color screens, so that's color separation printed. So this is a long time ago, a lot of different ideas. Uh, at that time, I did my first 3D movie. I was a civil engineer at that time. I was you know, qualified as an engineer. And this was my first real attempt in computer modeling of buildings. So this is, again, um, perhaps the first architectural movie of a real scene ever. Eight years on, we moved to the systems that are available then. CAD is taking off somewhat. There are no integration, integrated systems. Sonata, I was just starting in 84, and Graphisoft was, or Radar, which was a, uh, a pre version of um, Graphisoft systems, was just getting underway as well. So the, the time, that's how it looked, that was the look. First desktop machines, primitive graphics capabilities, no standard file formats. The first pull-down menus were just available then, although in this system I had to program them all myself. So there's no standards, two years in an attic, everything from scratch. And this is what I wrote. This document's in the RIBA archive at the v &A. I guess the interesting bit, which is BIM, is the second one. Well, it's all BIM. Object-based model forcing coordination between different drawings and the non-graphics data, intelligent objects capable of self-design and self-detailing. So you see the fundamentals of BIM there. This is the interface. So I understand this was done for, without, in 1985, this one, 1986 perhaps, when the first color screens were coming out available, the pull-down menus we had to do from first principles, drawing a line on the screen in the first one was actually involved changing pixels in memory one by one. So this is, you see in this, we see the fundamentals of BIM, the plan, elevation, and section, and the 3D. Uh, symbolic plan, symbolic and mixed elevations, and the section, you see the uh, slab in the top right. That's a um, section through the beam and 3D. 
and the first use of icons. Again, sitting down, I had to do all the icons myself. Excuse them. And the imaging algorithms were also written from first principles. So Sonata was effectively the first BIM system. As we work through the talk, you'll see that all the different parts are, were there. BIM consists of a single model, parametric views, lots of different views, so the drawings and everything can be represented consistently. And basically, this was put together for the first time in a single system in Fortran, clash detection, pipe and electrical network solving. And here we have a video of the time. There's no sound. Sonata takes the drudgery out of design, releasing creativity. The latest generation of workstations is used with unique software developed by building design professionals. For ease of use, the keyboard is rarely used. Most instructions are conveyed by a mouse. By using a series of icons and pull-down menus, all instructions are conveyed with great ease and simplicity. At the time, it's a very novel. Let's look at some of these in more detail. And certainly on the workstation, I suspect, and again, I don't know if this is perhaps the first use of pull-down menus and icons. This is the 2D menu. Sometime later, the sketch scheme may be developed further. And again, you see this by exchanging the lines in the sketch. What you see in Revit today is not that different. Sonata's time-saving capabilities mean that sketch schemes can be turned into production drawings very rapidly. Sonata will go around automatically tidying up all the junctions, regardless of angle. We're now ready to introduce yeah, some windows in, in the top left-hand corner of the building, plus doors. In selecting from our library, we search for the particular element in which we're interested. This movie was done in 1988. We may have used a variety of door types or objects in the last month, and here they're all stored, ready for instant recall. Sonata lists this information page by page on the screen for the operator to select the appropriate element. Using snap codes, the windows can be placed very accurately in the wall at the required distances apart. One of the differences between Sonata and Revit is that in Sonata, this we is actually a different kind of menu called user the windows in the wall. It contains elements so which are in regular use to simplify and the speed up production. Hole in the 3D, the communication, the bi-directional communication is Here we the same. select larger windows in Revit, and position them at the midpoint automatically the based on families. Families is definitely a Revit um, idea. Now we're ready to introduce a door using snap codes to find the nearest Full part parametrics. of the wall. You'll see the door change from single door to double door. It's a parametric door, meaning that its form can be varied in size and shape to meet the design criteria. In this case, we've moved Obviously from a single we're building to a double the 2D door. model. We're actually building in 3D. We're building an elevation, reference. symbolic and plan. Let's now and, introduce uh, a different style of window from our pop-up menu. Here, the high-level windows to light the changing cubicles will be introduced into the building interior. Using snap codes, the windows are positioned in the walls, and we will use the matrix placing function to locate a series of them at known distances in the wall. Initially, these will be located transparently in the wall before confirming the join. Sonata can join elements by creating an intelligent dynamic link between them. Again, it's bi-directional yeah, link, passing windows information and doors back are being and being introduced forward. very accurately, together with appropriate detail. Closure details, the all has indicated automatically that specific in all information views, will be used so you have a particular doors or windows are related. Now we introduce the changing rooms, using... needs to run. Yeah. Let's 
have a look now at our designs in 3D. Here we use the camera analogy to simplify the way Remember we this, set up perspective views. These machines ran at one ten thousandth the speed they do today. And you'll see in the uh, examples later on that the complexity is a not that different. A number of types of perspective can be used. Today. In this case, a two-point perspective. The way has been and we can even say to Sonata, let's limit our attention to this section of the building. This enables us to work as quickly in 3D as most systems can operate in 2D. Working in perspective enables a designer to visualize with far greater clarity the effects which occur as design changes are made. In another example, you can see the hazing effect inside the building and in the upper right portion of the building through the glass, you can, can see transparency and spotlights in the lobby scratch. space. Like my Here we can see the effect of changing so light color and fabric texture on the chairs. The Again, you see policy, the captured see image of Max Headroom on the, the wall. Not too Imagine bad. the creative flexibility again, offered to an interior designer now, by Sonata. Nicer, At the end of the day, the designer wants drawings for use on site and for circulation. Naturally, Sonata provides these quickly, efficiently, and accurately. In fact, the images you've just seen are simply views of the working drawings. Of particular importance to larger practices and businesses course, is Sonata's multi-user project uh, access software, which allows a team is, of designers to work on the same area of a project simultaneously, access. with changes being reflected instantly on all workstations in the network. We all did project this, information is therefore entirely consistent and updated on all workstations. MPA improves productivity, with work being done at maximum speed, efficiency, and with total accuracy. 2D drawings and sketches. So, it was in full-time use until a few years ago. Um, it precedes Reflex, which is the next system I'm going to talk about. And by chance, I happen to keep a ton of material from that, all of which has gone into the V&A. Um, as a little story as part of it, I went to Autodesk in 1987, and um, they'd seen the system already, or they certainly their technical people had seen the system some uh, months before the show in the US. So I went to Sausalito and started showing them the system. Uh, they jumped up there, got very excited. Ten minutes into the presentation, the CEO uh, was called out by a telephone call. He came back a little bit ashen. Ten minutes after that, the phone call the phone went again. All the staff went out, and they didn't come back. And unfortunately, the day I'd chosen to, or had been chosen, was Black Monday in 1987. So Autodesk did not get Sonata then. They did get it some years later albeit in a different form. And that form is close to Reflex. It's a direct descendant of Sonata. And this is, I sat down basically in 92 and said, OK, Sonata wasn't going to, was being canned in its way, and I had to do something different. So we went through the whole system again, CEO running this company, second generation BIM, same idea, but with C++ proper objects, dynamic link libraries to improve the performance of parametrics. I sold that to PTC for 30 million in 96. I was chief technology officer of, CT, of PTC for a couple of years. Um, the rest of that story is the founders of Revit were PTC employees and they acquired the rights of Reflex. They have a non exclusive development license, but we'll talk about that later on. And this is Reflex, how it looked, but from the point of view of Taylor Woodrow, who uh, are one of our many, many customers from the 90s. The Reflex modeling package is central to the process. An object-orientated database allows the models to be quickly constructed from a range of powerful elements. Each element in the model represents a physical component within the finished scheme and has a wide range of information assigned to it relating to graphical representation, cost, quantity, program and maintenance. That's a slider representing different dates and times of the model. So a date representation of the model. 
the model becomes a coordinated, comprehensive machine, so we're actually getting all some real hardware at all stages of the project. This database is totally accessible to all members of the project team and can be linked to a wide range of existing software to allow effective and intelligent exchange of planning, cost and specification information. The system has the ability to act as a complete management tool or to resolve a specific project issue and is now being utilised on a diverse range of projects throughout the company. Taylor Woodrow are applying the technology to increasingly complex engineering and infrastructure projects where coordination of structure and services are of prime importance. Throughout all sectors of manufacturing industry, there's been a shift in recent years. A shift towards greater efficiency, higher production and reduced costs through the use of new technology. These issues are of particular importance to the construction industry. Use of three dimensional computer I don't think know, any of you know Peter Baxter from Autodesk, that's him on the right. It's becoming using, an accepted standard within the industry. Taylor Wood has in. progressed the technology further with an innovative approach which also addresses the issues associated with time and cost and quality to aim towards zero defects. Using state of the art technology, the system coordinates three dimensional computer modeling with time and cost within a single database. 5D project modeling. Again, the term has been bandied around recently. This as brings new. benefits at all stages of the design and construction new process. Well, really. From testing the business case, brief verification, scheme and detailed design, through to on site coordination, planning, and eventual full life cycle management. In effect, a prototype building is constructed in the computer before any costs are committed to test all aspects of the project. The principal the aim of the approach is to achieve total uh, predictability of both the product and the process by minimizing the number of changes made once the project commences. This approach is now bringing benefits to clients, designers and contractors alike. The Royal Albert Hall, unique among buildings, holds a special place in people's hearts across the world. The nation's village hall has become one of the world's principal music venues. However, there is now a need for additional and improved facilities for Now being 1996, I guess. Taylor Woodrow's initial nine-month appointment for this technically demanding contract involves the full integration of modeling to assist in the programming and sequencing of the works. Direct linking of the model to planning. So I had to go and work for Taylor Woodrow during this time in order to pay the salaries of guys the working on the system, corridor, which is the why there's quite a close tie between construction project. modeling, construction All areas management, and the modeling. Can then be highlighted and a full assessment made in conjunction with all interested parties. In relation to construction work associated with the South Steps area, Existing details of the basement construction have been recorded. Here you've got just there. Uh, that's a screenshot from Reflex, albeit not really a screenshot, composite screenshot. You see the, uh, the middle view of the door in plan and the cavity closures inserted automatically. The same door in 3D, chopping a hole through the wall, exactly the same as Revit does today, no difference. And the parametric... Um, table you fill out when you place the object to get the different sizes and shapes. Again, we have networks of objects, uh, passing duct work for passing uh, pressures, temperatures of air along around ducts or electric, electricity around cables or stresses and strains around 3D um, steel frameworks. These networks are actually solved in situ in the model. Here we go through some case studies. So I'm going to flip through these fairly quickly because we are already running out of time. Um, 
This is from 1986, see? and the um, first day cover there sort of proves that. The model of the National, Australian National Tennis Center. Uh, images, again, all around this time. Some of the, most of them are dated. Hidden line and pretty images. So a long time ago, internal. So there I've modeled the lights, spotlights, textures, transparencies. And it's a reasonable effect for 30 years ago. Here we have some drawings. There are lots and lots of drawings produced. Primarily, it was a drawing producing system, and the color was sold as an option. But here we have coordinated plan, elevation, 3D. And these, obviously, these buildings were built. The um, symbolic plans, symbolic elevations, and 3D. So different sorts of lighting. The one on the right, the top one's the, the computer-generated one, in case you're wondering. But again, it's a long time ago, so it's National Theatre, shadow testing from that time. That's Melbourne Central Business District and the church on the right there is being refurbished. We move into engineering. We had roads running through the um, ground models, and that's a roof from, a parametric roof from Zoo, from GMW Partnership. Parametric grooves. This is ground modeling data pulled into the model from pa via parametrics for the, the Albert Hall. Uh, the bridge, Hong Kong Bridge, car park in Melbourne. Parametric stadium done by Engineering Technologies at the time. Uh, a parametric uh, core design, automatic. This was a slightly more interesting project. The, when the, uh, the tunnels collapsed at Heathrow in the 90s, we're actually involved with uh, modeling the dam, the coffer dam. We had sensors placed in the coffer dam with McDonald, bringing information into the model. So as the model, as the coffer dam actually moved, or if it moved, we would see a much exaggerated uh, representation within the model. Uh, obviously the contouring and we did the full uh, NATAM tunnels, I think they're called. There is a, some work on um, factories. And in fact, our biggest customer was the People's Republic of China. And I didn't see what happened. In fact, I've just come back from there last week. But we didn't see what happened to all of that work. I believe it went into mostly power plants and town planning. Um, but they must have had 70 or 80 systems over the years. Construction management, we've seen this new term, 5D production project modeling, is old. Uh, and Joe, by pure chance, Joe, our host today, did this model and other bits. And uh, he laid claim to it just a few minutes ago. So construction sequencing of this. Engineering technology did the work for this. We won the Construction Industry Award. And the images in the middle, vertical column, are Joe Crozer again, our host. Thank you, Joe. Again, just different live models tying in the Gantt charts into the construction model. Building services. In fact, building services was our biggest market in the UK. And until 2010, this system was in regular use. Uh, that's the British Library. That is a model from 2010. I don't actually know where it's from. But BAM UK had done this. It's a Sonata model. So that software was 25 years, I guess roughly, when they old, when they used, did that. But they're saying, until 2010, it was the best system out there for doing uh, services. And here we see the symbolic elevations, plans, and a 3D of the same model. And that's the sort of complexity we're getting. So we're, we're able to do real live projects, albeit a bit slower. And you'll see there's obscuration. So bits on top are hiding the bits behind. So there's quite a lot of computation. For that time, that was pretty intense sort of computation. So the timeline was 1982, 83 root cups. 
which was a, a 2D system. I added the 3D to that, but it was still very much non-BIM. Sonata, Reflex, Pro Reflex of PTC, and then Revit took that technologies. The a different license went to Beck, who are U US uh, firm. Uh, and Revit was acquired by Autodesk, and the rest is history. So Sonata, and I'm going to talk about the influence now, and some of this is opinion, so you know, keep the lawyers at bay, please. Uh, Revit, in my opinion, is a derivative of Reflex, and certainly the technology, as I'll go through in a moment, is very much... Archicab was influenced by it, and... Uh, it was, well, I think the easiest way to say this, because I don't want to say too much. This is the founder of uh, Archicad, and basically he's saying that Archicad at that time was a, or in fact it was Radar CH, was a predecessor of BIM, and these are his words, which he's agreed I can publish. And having said that, Sonata surpassed already the mature definition of BIM specified a decade and a half later. So this is in 1986, and that was BIM. And that's in the words of somebody else, who if you look at Wikipedia, it actually says his company did it. But he's saying it wasn't us, it was Sonata. Revit's a bit more tricky. Revit are insistent oh, that they did it. And that means they did the single model with all the different views, which has been around since 1960. They reinvented that. We delivered the reflex code to them in 1997 at direction of PTC with 80 man hours of explanation. A significant part of the Revit functionality is found in reflex and all of the reflex functionality pretty much is found in Revit. Revit does have things that reflex didn't have and that's a graphical pen parametric generator which is a really neat device. Uh, they have introduced the concept of families and they've obviously changed the interface. The underlying concepts are identical. And there are three, at least three consistent identical bugs between the two systems. Every person that's used both systems, and Joe has used both, is in no doubt as to which system comes from where. So these are errors. This is a highly complex system where you have very deep wall closures, very detailed things going on. And the fact that they're trying to do exactly the same things, exactly the same place, and having exactly the same bugs says something. Again, wall joins there showing not identical bugs, but I wasn't actually able to get exactly the same angles. And of course, they're calling Revit, and I do have version one of Revit running on my machine at home. Uh, this was the first parametric builder. So obviously, we have seen previous parametric builders. In fact, mine wasn't the first parametric building modeler either. There were some before me. So all of those concepts, and I'm not going to read them all, are identical between Reflex and Revit. And perhaps there's 100 man years of effort until 1997 from myself, from my team, from people working on libraries, from customers, in bringing that whole system together. So, and again, I choose my words carefully. In my opinion, I think it's unlikely that they managed to invent it in a couple of years, but it's possible, I guess, and that's what they are claiming. That's it running in 2015 on a desk, still at BAMU Construct in St. Albans. And that's the book, which you can read. And that's what we're working on at the moment, which is a VR system in taking some of the ideas of information modeling and sticking them into a, a retail environment. And that is my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I'd just like to add what Jonathan said there, uh, having used Sonata and then Reflex and then Revit. Uh, you can clearly see the development in the software and the overlap across all of the applications. Um, there's one more thing I want to say before the break, um, which I think is a fitting tribute 
uh, to Jonathan as well. Last year in 2016, the Royal Academy of Engineering uh, presented him with the Prince Philip Medal for uh, his contribution uh, to the revolution in BIM. And again, with the presentation of that medal, they recognized him as the founder of BIM. So again, big congratulations to Jonathan for that.